Well, welcome to another edition of the Digicel Sports Show right here on islandstats.com. I'm your host, Earl Bayston, and joining me yet again is back from a vacation, birthday celebration, uh, and all that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, hello, everybody. You do remember you had me sweating up at the uh, track. Well, I don't remember you actually taking part in that. You were sweating so much. Yeah. So I just wanted to say in a, yeah, better, in a better climate. Oh, I want you to forget back. that day too. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very interesting show. A lot of interviews that we have uh, gone through. Um, but first, let's get a message from our sponsor. Bermuda, listen up. D-Music is here exclusively for Digicel customers. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free. With D-Music, you can easily search for your favorite artists and create playlists to fit your lifestyle. Plus, you have the option to download music to your device so you can find a song for any moment, even when offline. D-Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in-store or online to see how you can get D-Music today. Well, Jay, a news coming to Island Stats and the Digital Sports Show that all is not well at St. George Road. Uh, obviously, there's been a development. Um, I had a chance to earlier today interview the, uh, I want to say, current, soon to be former president of the Western Star Sports Club. Let's get that interview with Willis Still. But it's still rumor mills all around St. John's Road that uh, the current executive have all tendered their resignation. Um, can this be confirmed? Um, everyone except for one individual has um, pretty much tendered their resignation. What, what brought this about? Um, <laughs> uh, I had called a um, special general meeting last week to, for the purpose of adopting our new constitution bylaws and standing orders um we didn't get a quorum so um we had a discussion um i opened up the floor or well the, in a general way the floor was opened up so that um members could speak there was about uh, maybe about 13 15 um, members there and um they expressed some dissatisfaction with um I, I, i'm not gonna say the other the other executive but with me as president but um and um, their their main their main concern <laughs> their main concern was that they didn't see me enough at the club. Um, the bar is never open, um, and that that for me that seemed to be you know their their, their main um their main their main gripes. Um, and um, they asked us they asked us to resign. Recently, I'm going to get the. Uh, renew the, the liquor license, the liquor license board, all the clubs have to go there. There were some challenges of clubs, and, and your club was one of those clubs challenged for a length of period of time. What were some of the things that was discussed in that that you had to sort of take into consideration for the day-to-day -day operation of uh, the Western Star Sports Club? <laughs> oh, you don't know the half of it, man. I tell you, you, you know, these folks, um, for them, it's just a matter of coming to a bar and having a drink. Um, obtaining a liquor license is very in-depth and I would imagine that there was a time when you could just write to the liquor license and quote unquote get your license renewed it's not like that anymore the social climate in Bermuda has drastically changed as we all know and um, the liquor license has has been cracking down um, on not just on clubs but on establishments overall um, I can tell you stories from sitting in there but that's it's not appropriate for this time but um, I can tell you stories about the way that um, businesses um, and not just clubs, but other organizations have been treated. When I say been treated, um, I'm saying it in a respectful way um, because the liquor license authority is basically saying to people, um, these are your rules, and these are your regulations, and you got to pull them in line. Now, um, what happened with our liquor license, um, as you can imagine, one, I, th I, would, um, I think that one of the reasons why um, we were pulled in is, um, if you, as you will remember, um, we had a murder at the club. And that was one of the reasons why um, we were pulled in. See, what these what these guys and and I and I, I, I you know I support what they're doing. I might not have any gripes um, against the um, um, the um, liquor license authority. What what they're actually doing is um, um they're actually saying to people, listen, there, these are rules, and you must follow these rules. Now, in our case, you know, we we, we did have this murder 
unfortunately at the club and we had to come in to um to to speak to them about that because obviously our bar was open and they want to know what actually took place so um i had to do that um that was the first time i went and then i was summoned again and the second time i went um <laughs> i was there for over an hour man i was i was uh, like I could, if I could put it this way, I was on the stand for 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 for, for, for cl close to or over an hour, um, and they were, you know, asking me a whole lot of questions about um, about the club, about the the bar, and um, just about the club generally, and you know, all that sort of stuff, you know. Um, and people just don't know. People just don't know the half of it. And and the thing is this: that once your <laughs> once your license expires, it's quite obviously <laughs> you can't operate until you get get another one. So. It's not on me to determine when I get the license. So it's up to the liquor's license authority to either grant it or deny it. So um, I was there for over an hour, man. And I could tell you, um, um, whilst I, I enjoyed the, the dialogue with them, um, um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was rough. It was rough, you know, to know that, um, you know, you have to go there on behalf of members to, to have discussion about what takes place at the club. So what next for the Western Star Sports Club? What's next for you? What's next? <laughs> what's next for me? Well, um, what's next? When you say what's next, you mean what am I going to do from her? Uh, yeah. What, what, <laughs> what's next for Realist Deal, who's now not the, who will tomorrow hand over uh, the role of president to someone else? Okay. Um, what's next for me? Well, there, there is something that um, I've been toying with to do with the club which i think i'm still gonna um fulfill that i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna do that because it's, it's something that the club needs and it's very important so i'm gonna do that and then um the other thing i've already been approached by um um a national association um to do some to do some work you know with them um there was something that um i had a conversation about during my presidency and um a discussion was held about you know to bring all this stuff in line and so i'm going to be assisting um probably one of the national associations about well, football um to um um get some things sorted out yeah what do you think where do you think western star sports club goes from here because you, hearing you you still want to be involved but where do you think the club goes from here well let me let me correct you on that one um my involvement will be very limited um you know here, here's the thing, Earl. Um, <laughs> people need to understand that um, running a club is 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 not a I, I kind of want to say an easy thing, but th but there's a lot of stuff that takes place in running a club. You know, um, you know, the, the the bar is one thing. What, what, you know what? One of the things that um came to me um, as I as I reflected on that particular meeting, I don't recall anybody talking about the programs of the club. And so if they're more concerned about the bar more than the programs, then they can have it. Because for me, I think the programs are, are the most important things. And, um, you know, we have probably one of the, bat one of the battle football programs, I think we do, um, in the country. And we've had that for quite some time. And, um, and I'm talking about from the PBs right on up to the seniors. And our cricket program, which was one of my mandates when I was elected president, was to try and you know get the get the cricket program up and running and that the, the, the senior man is doing quite good and our youth teams are, are are doing you know quite good so i mean what what am i going to be doing well i'm gonna have a lot of free time to um, um to cut grass at home now jay you've heard what willis has had to say um, interesting um, enlightening uh, eye-opening Many other words I can explain, but you heard you heard the interview. What's your thoughts on the situation going on presently at the St. George Road Club? Well, obviously, uh, we've been hearing rumbles for a while. Um, but from the outside looking in, because we're not privy to a lot of the inside con mm -hmm. conversations. And he only alluded to a few things. Obviously, there's still one side of the story. We haven't heard from the other members or the members who are disgruntled mm -hmm. or the executive who is disgruntled, whatever the case may be. But, Earl, I tell you, this story I've heard replayed over and over and over with numerous clubs across the island. Mm -hmm. I think membership 
when they, and I think, you know, probably needs to be the executive, when they go and pay the dues, mm-hmm. I think they should be given a booklet of what is entailed, number one, to be a member, mm-hmm. and what the club has to upheld to regarding the law, mm-hmm. especially clubs that have a liquor license, mm-hmm. right down to the type of liquor license. Yes. Because there that are those <laughs> there are several. <laughs> there are several mm-hmm. and different things have to be in place for that. Mm-hmm. Now, once you know where you stand on on a as far as a base as far as being protected, then you gotta throw in the social eels. Mm. That can arouse up at any moment, at any time, at any place. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, they had a mur- they had a murder there. Mm-hmm. Nobody, I mean, is nobody gonna you know? Not, you just don't think that's gonna happen there, right? But it's something that you have to deal with, mm-hmm. and then gotta see well, was this in place? Was that in place? Was this in place? And then, then you're talking about families. So you're talking about emotions on both sides. Mm-hmm. So it can get very, very messy. But to just to add to that, becoming an executive of any club, I'll tell you, is, is a thankless job. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a thankless job because the hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of volunteer because management don't get paid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's out of the love for the club. It's out of the love for the club. So I think every single person that goes into management is looking to do something better for the club and put the club in a better situation before they got there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it all depends on what state of the club prior to them getting there Mm -hmm. and the leadership to take it there. Now, this time you see there is a lack of confidence in Willis Dill as the leader Mm -hmm. and they're looking to get a new president. But I don't think, you know, I get back to the... The problems that these problems did happen overnight. No, no. But you know what's interesting? He he mentioned that they didn't have enough for a quorum. So um, maybe he should have or should call another AGM with this as the agenda to see if maybe the other people that did not show up are in support of what the current executive are doing because yeah. it weren't that many but you're absolutely yeah. right because when you say that realistically by their constitution if you didn't have enough for a quorum it basically it's it's not a void right. it's, it's, it's just, just a discussion a, right which All they right? had so it's nothing on the books to say as of yay or nay mm-hmm. um but you're absolutely right and it could be for different reasons maybe the word didn't get out whatever mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. right but just playing devil's advocate right, right now right um but in saying that Earl. These problems we've heard that it's from east to west. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> and every club in between. I think if you had a discussion with club presidents, and I know they have organized, they, they did talk um, around the um, shootings and murders. Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. they came together mm-hmm. for some of this, but I wonder if they, these meetings kept. But well, they have, they have a president's committee. A that, president's that, committee, that, exactly. That continue to meet. And, and I'm pretty sure they are all going through the exact same thing now what what i would love to see and this is this is a wish list for me Earl, because after speaking with a few old members from a couple of clubs a couple of years ago um talk about some of the history of why these clubs came about mm-hmm. and how they was able to thrive yeah in the 60s right in the 70s right. um they didn't have all these programs. They just had a few, but you know, they had more families into it. It was less distraction. And last right. And see this is less distraction. That too. But also there was a collaboration. Right. From all the clubs. Yeah. They worked together. And they all worked together. Mm-hmm. They didn't depend on somebody else because mm-hmm. they all did it together. And I just give you a, a, a very quick synopsis. Even when it retained it to the bar, they talked about the bar, but mm-hmm. I knew at one point in time many clubs pitched in and brought the liquor together. Mm-hmm. In containers and then disperse it amongst themselves right. accordingly. Right. I mean, these are the things that are cost saving that could probably even help them, even though that happened many years ago. Mm-hmm. I think something like that could happen today. Right. But in saying that, 
sometimes, and we talked about it earlier, sometimes winning sort of covers uh, up. Yeah, without a doubt. A when lot you, of when, problems. When, when you don't do well, it's always somebody's fault. Um, and I think people need to stop, reevaluate certain situations and say, has this, has this problem manifested itself over the course of a long period of time? And if it has, why now? Mm -hmm. is is the fact that we're not winning mm -hmm. the reason we're bringing it up now mm -hmm. or um is it something that we we feel is is unable to continue with uh, take out the winning part take mm -hmm. out the losing part and and for most of it it's winning covers up mm -hmm. so much wrong stuff or negative stuff that is going on at the club that should be addressed while you're winning and not when things are going. Uh, it's winning yeah. at what cost? Well, yeah, yeah, because a lot was thrown by the wayside <laughs> while some mm -hmm. team was winning. So, you know, you, you look at those type of things and you say to yourself, "Well, um, I'm who? very interested in the statement that he made, uh, referring to there wasn't much conversation at the time mm -hmm. about the programs. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where I would like to hear more about has the programs flourished on this presidency wow. have they have they gone to a next level in this presidency mm -hmm. because now we're talking about the aesthetics of the club itself right. this is what you're supposed to be in the community for if you're lacking in that department then i could definitely see a change for presidency how interesting it is that they've asked for the executive to resign when all but two of their program teams are abroad peewees and the men's senior team are not abroad they have every other age group currently playing in a tournament either in the u.s or the uk yeah something just doesn't well like i said earlier there's something that we have to try to get the other side of the story and i don't, I don't want to say anything regarding to that because we're in here from one side but i one first of all i just got to commend willis still no more just putting his name forward mm. and i think that's what I'll, you know hearing this story it might motivate somebody else mm -hmm. But I can guarantee it's going to discourage a lot of other people who are thinking about yeah. going to their local community club to mm -hmm. try to help out. Because when you hear stories like this, it's like, do I really feel like getting involved mm -hmm. with this? Mm -hmm. You know? And it's unfortunate. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? And the lack of funding. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, they're, I don't know, the, the type of partnership they have with government. Mm-hmm with that facility that right. grounds or right. you know I think it's very similar to North Village yeah. um, what they have at Bernard's Park yeah. but it's still a lack of funding mm -hmm. <laughs> so you gotta be creative um, especially if your bar is not open right? but your bar could be open due to other reasons mm -hmm. um, trying to cool the social climate down because some clubs do that right? To, cl to cool the social climate down if you're having too much activity that's ill activity around the club the easiest thing to do, number one, is just close the bar down. Shut it down. And and, and yeah. try to calm the So, you know, it's a lot of things we don't know that or too many variables that go into place, mm. but once again, it's it's not a good day for the folks around St. George Road. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free with D Music, exclusively from Digicel. With D Music, you can stream and download songs and create playlists of your favorite artists to fit your lifestyle. Whether you're working out at the gym, getting ready for a Friday night, or just chilling at home, D Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in store or online to see how you can get D Music today. <laughs> You're laughing, Jay, because on Saturday, you got me so excited. I oh, think, you got me so excited. I think everybody was excited. Oh, you got me so excited. Western County Cup competition round two. Southampton Rangers, the cup holders against Somerset Bridge, the challengers. Rained all day Friday, overcast and mm -hmm. rainy. Rained mm -hmm. most of Friday night into Saturday morning. The match was delayed two hours uh, due to a wet wicket. Mm -hmm. um, Somerset Bridge won the toss and sent Rangers to bat. Which will be the correct thing to do due to a wet wicket. Uh, most captains will do that. Oh, yes, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, Nobody will know the, you know, how that wicket's going to play. play. The problem was the wicket was doing a lot more than anyone would have imagined. Um, 
We saw players going through strokes early because the ball was sticking to the wicket. Mm -hmm. It wasn't coming off mm -hmm. as fast as mm -hmm. they thought it would come off. Mm -hmm. um, Kwame Tucker hit here straight in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, a simple ball that down the leg side, all he's trying to do was just help it around the leg side. Mm -hmm. It would top the edge off the, because mm -hmm. he was through his shot early. Mm -hmm. So it hit the, the, the edge. So it was back. actually slower than it. Slower than, a lot slower than. Than what um, they may have thought. Ian, Ian Armstrong, uh, uh, just looking to push the ball through the onside. Mm -hmm. uh, the ball, he was halfway through the shot, and the ball hit the bat, and Lolly popped to the man at mid on. Uh, those type of things where um, it was it was definitely something that um, Somerset Bridge exploited to build Southampton Rangers out for 142. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think everybody on the south and Middle Road and north side of Somerset Bridge came around it. Yeah. Because here's an opportunity with one problem, Jay. They had to go in bed. The wicket hadn't dried out enough. Yeah. <laughs> and Southampton Rangers has bowlers that exploited that wicket and took full advantage of the lack of application that Somerset Bridge showed in their inning. 37. Well, one word you said just not application. And due to the dry summer we've had so far mm -hmm. there's nothing you could train for this right there's no other way you can prepare yourself to play on a record like that unless it's a day like saturday right so for both teams they're at a disadvantage mm -hmm. in that it's not like you can go tuesday and say you know what hey guys let's bring the water out and right. just <laughs> throw it on the wicket yeah. and let's see if we can no is there but it's the application of it and once you recognize or what is it doing then it's then it's how do we apply our experience mm. to this because most guys have probably played in position in one wickets like this but how how often when was the last time so you got to right. try to draw off experience right well that's what that's the difference between the two teams yeah one team is vast amounts of experience mm -hmm. to play in many conditions or many wickets and another team is not right well definitely um Dion Stubble, Gennaro Tucker and Alex Dorr should their patience and experience. Mm -hmm. um, all three made it into the 30s um, in their inning, uh, which was just shy of what Somerset Bridge made all together. And, and you know, with Somerset Bridge, and, and I'll say from year to year, it's one of those teams that it doesn't matter what it was Thursday, Sunday, Tuesday, these guys come play with heart. Mm -hmm. But it's the experience of players that you probably got about three, two or three really experienced players and, mm -hmm. the, and then they have coaching right. on the field themselves right. now over the years they've been a better fielding team yes they've been a better fielding team mm -hmm. their problem is is in the batting department right. and in the, the likes of uh woods mm -hmm. no. charles right Danny. and riley yeah sure mm -hmm. if they don't produce the goods yeah. then it could be a, a very very um short day yeah <laughs> Well, let's hope that the under-19 cricket team who departed Bermuda yesterday heading for the ICC America's World Cup qualifiers have a better time at the sport than uh, Somerset Bridge did on Saturday. Let's get the interview with the national coach, Clay Smith. What are some of the things you've been working on this past week to ensure to give you that, that boost you're going to need once you hit the ground running? Well, first of all, let me just say um, thank you to Bayless Bay because we've been up there from Monday to Thursday, and then we've come down to St. George's on Friday. And the hospitality has been first class, and we're very appreciative of that. Um, over the last couple of days, we've been doing a lot of running between the wickets, and because in our practice games, that was one of our, what we noticed was one of our weaknesses, you know, not turning ones into twos and twos into threes, getting these guys to understand the, the art of actually running hard, you know. Um, from a bowling perspective, making sure they understand what field places they need to be bowling at. These guys are young, they're, very, they're still learning the game, so sometimes they have some very awkward fields, you know. So we're just making sure that they're, you know, tidying those little things up and getting them to just be consistent with their lines, you know, um, bowling to a field place. And, um, and from the batting aspect, basically, Trying to, uh, uh, we've had a few sessions where all we've done is tell them we don't want nothing in the air. We just want them to hit the ball on the ground because traditionally as Bermudian small fields, they like to hit the ball outside. Having been to Canada with the national team, these fields are huge. They're not those 
little you can miss it and guys will catch you 20 yards off the boundary so we're getting them to hit the ball on the ground hitting gaps and running hard because that's what it's going to take once we get out there you know so um they've come a long way as the weeks progressed um and the good thing is that when we get to canada we will actually have everybody there um, marcus and jabari i think come back either today or tomorrow and the boy really will meet us right over there so we have two practice games plus maybe two sessions before the actual tournament starts so we should be ready come competition time we over the last few years have struggled internationally especially in, uh, at this age group um, what are you hoping or what are you looking for this time around to be different well to be quite honest with you this this group here is a very relative is relatively a young squad out of the 14 i think 11 of them are still able to play in the next tournament and we have maybe about four or five that could play two more tournaments so they're relatively young so right now we're really looking to be competitive and try to win if we can win two out of the four matches i think that will be a really good tournament for us now again the crickets played on this day and like i said like i told them if we continue to do the right things and and play to our full potential ability wise we can we can do it my concern with these guys because of their age is their uh, maturity level can they be disciplined enough to do what's required of them to execute the game plan that's where that's where we're gonna my concern you know so i'm hoping that when they get over there you know that they're able to to put it all together because i i, I tell them i believe in you it's a matter of you believing in yourself of that you're you're good enough to um perform at this level i think it's it's more mental than anything talent wise they have it it's just mentally you know like i talk specifically to lj for instance last couple of weeks he's got savages why haven't you been able to go on to get 100 you know and we've talked about these things what do you what what goes through your mind at these stages you know what i mean so again not being satisfied with scoring 50 because you're okay well i'm scored on international 50 no go on and get 100 you know so and i put a couple of incentives in for the bowlers and for the batsmen you know so hopefully that will encourage them to think big rather than being satisfied with low 30s and 40s you know your experience uh, in canada you know about the conditions and, and the fields in which you'll play on uh, what do you what do you see um who do you see as a standout for bermuda um to take advantage of the wickets in which they'll play on and the conditions in which they'll play in. <laughs> well, I'll, to be quite honest, if you have 11, I have 14 players and obviously we're going to pick our best 11 and out of those 11 that we pick, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting three or four of them to, to, to perform and, and help us to win the games. We have so many different match winners. Um, but I don't want to single anybody out because on the on the day any one of them can be match winners and like I told them it could be your day one day and tomorrow will be his. But as long as we do everything that because everything that we do has to be team orientated, you know what I mean. So again, um, the good thing for us is that we have some players like Nairobi Mills, you have LJ, you have Kushai Darrell, Tybre Robinson. These guys have been playing at premier level so they've been playing against quality opposition and um, hopefully their experience at that level would shine and show come tournament time bermuda listen up d music is here exclusively for digicel customers open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free with d music you can easily search for your favorite artists and create playlists to fit your lifestyle Plus, you have the option to download music to your device so you can find a song for any moment, even when offline. DMusic comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in-store or online to see how you can get DMusic today. Jay, last week, um, the president of the Bermuda Football Association and other executive members, President Mark Reed, and other executive members uh, headed off to New York for the start of the Girl Cup, but also to have a meeting with the CONCACAF president um, to discuss just some Caribbean matters. Uh, he wants to meet with various countries around the Caribbean and in CONCACAF to go over some of the things that he wants to have in place, what some of their needs are, and try to um, have some dialogue and how the, the region can help 
the countries such as Bermuda that have all these issues against them as far as... Um, okay, say the number one reason. Let's go... Plane tickets. Cost. Uh, Cost. Keep going. What's the overall word? Dispersion of finances. Yeah. yeah. And that's... You know, obviously, from what's going on in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. we still haven't heard from this president mm -hmm. uh, what would be, he's saying this could be a more equal dispersion mm -hmm. of, of funding, um, but we haven't heard, the public really hasn't heard that plan yet. Mm -hmm. um, we, it's in Canada, man. <laughs> well, we, I was only going to say that we knew that it had been skewed to certain major yes, <laughs> yes. people in the region. Well, we know one thing for sure that they're working on right now bidding for the World Cup. Mm -hmm. And that's between Canada, USA, and Mexico. Mm -hmm. So um, we know where the intention is. Yes. Um, yeah. How the other countries in the region um, fare, fare in this. Mm -hmm. uh, but he and, might and, have been trying to just get by. And, and if you look at it, and if you look at it, it could work two ways even with that because let's say it does end up in one of those uh, the countries there obviously the funding's going to come definitely going to come mm -hmm. but now that might be able to trick it throughout the region also right. so yeah. it, it's it's something that's got to be a balance mm -hmm. but it would just be nice that we get to hear some publicly when it regarding to funding right well let's get the interview with president mark wade prior to his visit with the CONCACAF president <laughs> Mark Wade, you're about to head off to a meeting. A group of uh, uh, countries from the CONCACAF region will be meeting with the president of CONCACAF. Um, what's some of the things you're hoping to hear and what's some of the things you're hoping to let them know what is needed for Bermuda football for, for the next, say, four years? Sure. I mean, it, it, um, a lot of it is just exchanging our ideas and, and you know, we want to hear about more support um, and what, what form that support is going to take in. Um, it's not always money. Um, sometimes it's, it's um, expertise, advice, um, you know, sharing, sharing of, of success stories. Um, a, lot of that, a lot of that stuff doesn't happen in a boardroom. Um, a lot of it doesn't happen, um, you know, in a, in a formal meeting setting. Some of it happens in, more in the social settings. Um, so we're looking to, to do that and, and um, also talk about, you know, what are the things that Bermuda needs um, and how can we get them, you know, where, where, where can we get better surfaces, where can we um, improve on um, the, the technical side of the game locally, um, which again is one of, one, of, one of the pillars that I'm looking to tackle in the next four years anyway. Um, so it, it's sharing of ideas. Um, um, we, we, have some, we have some ideas that we're working on. Um, and we're going to need some um, some partners um, off island, and um, we're hoping to extend those conversations as well. Um, certainly, don't want to steal the thunder, the technical director, or uh, anyone else. So I'll, I'll keep that uh, keep that until we're ready to, to release it. But um, exciting. But um, part of the process is these sort of settings. Um, it, it's um, one of the things from um, the new CONCACAF executive is that we should get together more often. Um, and it doesn't have to be a full Congress for us to sit down and chat about, um, about football. And um, we're seeing the fruits of that already, where we, um, we're, we're able to have um, discussions about certainly the Nations League, which is a big, big change for everyone. Um, and you can't package all your, your, your questions and, and comments in an hour um, because you, you go away from that meeting, um, and I certainly did the first time it was presented to me. Um, and by the morning, <laughs> I have more questions, but of course the meeting is over. So um, you have the opportunity to talk about that. And um, so I'm, I'm hoping to have a, a bit of conversation about the Nations League um, and, and even some of the feedback from the technical team. Um, and, and find some, some answers to questions um, and our way forward, you know, what changes we, we have to make. Uh, so there's a, it's quite a bit on the back of my mind that um, we can discuss um, in these kind of settings. What about the fact our geographical location hurts us in the, the wallet when it comes to either us going or, or teams coming? Uh, that type of discussion with 
the powers that be within the CONCACAF region to assist us even more because of that fact. Yeah, um, that that's that is actually a part of the discussion whenever we get together. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, we were we were at um, the funeral of Captain Burrell last week. Um, couple conversations about that um, you know what, what what should we do I mean we had a lo a huge conversation about airlines and the Caribbean airlines and how well they're doing how well they're not doing mm -hmm. um, so there's there is Air Antilles there is Air yeah, Caribbean there is Liet there is there's a few of them mm -hmm. um, but understanding the airline business um, is is something that we need to to get our heads around um, because that's been one idea. Why don't we have a, a CFU airline that um, helps to transport teams of all levels? And it, does that commercially make sense? Um, so, you know, there's a, those are some of the discussions that, like I said, you, you can't have those in, in one setting mm -hmm. and one seating either, um, you know, because as you, as you absorb information and internalize it, then you, you know, you, you come back with something else. So, um, our geographical um, situation is, is, is tough, um, but when you hear about other people's <laughs> travel, um, travel routes, it's um, worse than ours, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Um, our travel roads are pretty good. They're just expensive. Right, right. Uh, whereas they have uh, poor travel roads, but uh, they're not expensive. Right. <laughs> so, so it's... Um, it, it, we, you have our own idiosyncrasies, so um, you know there, there's, there's there's a there's a some more some more of the conversations. You know what what do we do? Um, how do we get get matches um, at all levels? Uh, we you know the focus is is being trying to to get matches traditionally trying to get matches for the senior senior teams um, and senior men in particular. But you know we need to expand that. We need we need matches for our, our youth teams. Mm -hmm. I was going to make a note that um, the under-15 boys teams that will be facing Bermuda mm. in August are actually having a round robin tournament yep. right now. They're having a tournament right now, as yeah. we speak. A um, little disadvantage to Bermuda because yes. we're unable to. Yep. to yep. Uh, um, and and they're, they're able to, because they're small islands close together, they can do that. Mm. Um, the, the Is that a worry for the association, that those teams are getting those matches uh, and they will hit the ground running in August as opposed to we're, we're going to be playing kind of catch up? Um, worry, sort of, um, because, you know, without that experience, um, the, the players are, are a bit behind just little things like um, the protocols, mm -hmm. you know, the pregame protocols. The players, our players are used to, you know, showing up at Shelly Bay and referee comes and looks at our cards and off we go. Mm -hmm. But all the other things that happen at the international level, they're not, they're not, they're not exposed to. Um, and, and we try to reproduce it here, um, which, which we've done and will continue to do. But doing it live is not, not the same. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely that part of it. Um, we try to replicate the, the um, intensity of the game by getting players to play older age groups. Um, sometimes our under-15s will play men mm -hmm. just, to, just to bring that intensity and faster pace of the game. Um, so we try and replicate it, but of course, um, not doing it um, for real mm -hmm. is 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 a is is a concern. Um, so we have to. We, we're certainly going to consider how do we get matches for them. Um, the easiest thing for us, and it's probably the route we'll take, but um, that is entirely up to the technical development director, is we'll probably start to go back to regional competition in the U.S., which is not international football, but it is at a higher higher caliber mm -hmm. um, and a higher level and um, you know hopefully that that it, it certainly worked for us in the past um, but we need to you know figure out how we can go further than we did in the past so all right well I know you're in a hurry to get uh, to the airport for your meeting this evening sure. tomorrow yes <laughs> um, <laughs> back but, on uh, Saturday <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to your return and possibly some of the discussions uh, that you've had and, sure. and possibly what direction we can go in in the very near future with um, all of football. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Bermuda, listen up. D Music is here exclusively for Digicel customers. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free. With D Music, you can easily search for your favorite artists and create playlists to fit your lifestyle. Plus, you have the option to download music to your device so you can find a song for any moment, even when offline. D Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in store or online to see how you can get D Music today. Jay, a young tennis player, Daniel Phillips, is back on the island playing mm -hmm. in, a, in a tournament that the BLTA had over the last week. Um, he's 12, but played in the under 14s, won the under 14 age group, um, played in the under 16s, lost in the final, had a chance to sit down with him and his coach, his local coach, mm -hmm. uh, Sam Mabry, to get some insight on how he's making out both here and over in Spain. Daniel Phillips, uh, been back in Bermuda for a little while now. Uh, just recently played in a junior tennis tournament at the WER Guild Tennis Stadium. Yes. But you played two ages up from what you are, which is 12 years old. You played in the under 14s and the under 16s. Um, what are some of the things that you were doing? Obviously, you're playing people older than you, uh, a little more advanced, in, if I could say that, a little stronger than you. Um, how did you think you fared in both the under 14 and under 16, knowing that you won the under 14? Um, well, during the under 14s, I was I thought the first couple matches would be a little bit easier, but then as the more matches I won, the harder it got. But basically, in the semifinals and finals, I was just spinning the ball back to get the guy near the fence so I can come up to the net and attack or volley it away. Right. And under 16s, it was really hard sometimes because the guys are obviously older, stronger, wiser than me. But I did work my thread through it, and somehow I got to the finals. But it did work through. And yeah. then now, looking at the looking at the, the two finals, mm -hmm. um, obviously with the 14s, there's not in Bermuda. There's not that much of a gap. I mean, you've been playing over in Spain and over in Europe for quite some time, so yes. um, you're a little more advanced. So even though some of those 14s would be a little stronger, you're a little a lot wiser than yeah. they are and able to. But when you come to the 16s, it becomes a little tougher. Now, you pretty much breezed your way through the Bermuda 16s, mm -hmm. but had a little trouble with of the another experienced. Um, player in the 16s from the UK because he's on the ITF Junior Tour. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you take from that under-16 match? I learned that if you win, you don't learn a lesson, but if you do, you do. And I learned that this guy's obviously older and stronger, but I need to practice my strategies and just like what I have to do to get the point. Right. Yeah. Talk us through the experiences you've had over at uh, the Rafael Nadal Academy. Well, the experiences are is not like Bermuda. You cannot play two years older than your group because the people are obviously a lot more better than Bermuda some players. But and I learned that sometimes in the twelve, I would not even make it to the f to the third round because these guys are like they know what they're doing. They know they've been doing this. So, but I did do really good out there. I feel, mm -hmm. yeah. What other than the language? Because obviously you have the language down now yeah. somewhat. Um, what are what are the challenges you find as a twelve year old being in a in a different place? I find it I get homesick some days where I just want to. I feel tired some days where I have to wake up in the morning to go to breakfast, make my own breakfast, mm -hmm. and come back, and then I have to clean my room. Then I have to get myself organized and on time for when I have to go to school and do my homework by myself. So like there are some good things and some bad things. Some of the good things are. Is making me more of a man. Like I'm learning all these life experiences, is, and I'm just doing it myself, which is the better thing. As a twelve-year-old, how much do you love tennis? I I feel I'm one of the best best lovers in the in the sport <laughs> from my age. I really love the sport from young, mm -hmm. but there are some days where you just don't want to get out of bed, and sometimes I fall into that trap and don't do it, but. I feel I really love the sport and I want to go somewhere. Who are some of the people you've leaned on over the years, especially being away from Bermuda, 
to to get that support to motivate you yet again. Do you mean in Spain? In yeah. Spain, in Bermuda. Who was Uncle Sam, people? of course, yeah. like the main supporter, my mom, the, the community in Bermuda, basically the community, and the island. The island, Uncle Sam, my mom, and there was one player out there that like treated me like I was his family and stuff, but who basically. Like his name, he was like from Bulgaria and stuff. He'll pay for my lunches, my dinner sometimes. Yeah, he'll like, he'll help me string a racket sometimes. He'll go out with me on Sundays and Saturdays to hit with me. It was really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what's next for you? you next, um, so once I finish here, August 11th, I leave to go play a tournament in England. Then I'll co go in Spain, train, and then I might come back for, for a tournament in Bermuda. In the October, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Do you feel being away from Rita helps you focus more? You don't have the distraction of friends. Yeah, it focuses uh, me. I I just put friends out of the picture. Yeah. I'm them there to to win, to be the best that I can be. And like some of those friends I'll be playing against in the tournament and I cannot take it easy on them. Okay. Right. Mm. Um can you I, I need you to do something for me. Can you say um I love tennis in Spanish. Um, te amo tenis in español. I love tennis in Spanish. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right, All right. Sam, you you spent a lot of time uh, with a lot of juniors, but a special one in Daniel. Um, you saw uh, a star, if I could say that, uh, right from the start. He had the work ethic. He had the drive and the passion. But what are some of the other attributes you saw in him that helped to want you to push him to where he's at right now? Well, it was uh, his energy level kind of took care of that in and of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, we made a YouTube video when he was about six years old. And if you watch that video, you see him skateboarding, you see him uh, skipping, you see him running, you see... He was he would run up the fence, climb the tree, fall down, fall on his back of his neck, you know, just one of those wonderfully energetic Bermudian boys, like, you know what I mean? And just needed that energy to be directed and refined. And uh, as time went on, you know, he was able to stick in there. Uh, uh, he had his little cycle uh, accidents like everybody else, like, you know what I mean? Come up, old bandage up and whatnot, like that. Um, but he had a totally supportive family, his mom and dad. Uh, the amount of time that they put him in was over and beyond what normal two parents would, 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 would put in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was key in terms of uh, having the faith in me to, 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 to not just coach him, but also to guide him to the other coaches that would give him the things that I couldn't give him. Mm -hmm. Now, he, he, he's over in Spain, he's playing high-level tennis for a 12-year-old. What are some of the things you were working on back here when he comes home for this period of time? Obviously, you want to keep him at that pace. It's very difficult to find players other than the senior men players to, to hit with him to ensure that that intensity, one, stays high, and the other thing is that he stays sharp. Well, uh, quite a combination. Um, uh, ritual routine is... is, is is, uh, 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 makes that possible. Mm -hmm. The disciplines that we maintain makes that possible. Him getting up, doing his runs, doing his core cool stretches, uh, eating right. So he'll, you know, prepare his uh, his, his own food now, mm -hmm. um, keeping his room tidy. Uh, and then when we hit, the kinds of things that we work on are the basics because those never change. And so you can always sharpen the basics. And a lot of times, you know, in his development uh, 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 and his confidence, he would start to neglect doing some of the very basic, basic things. Like, and 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 it's and it's for all of them. I mean, the the the, the one thing that I focus on more than anything else is ready position. Mm -hmm. It's not hitting. It's not. It's not. It's it's ready position because no matter when you hit. It's you being prepared for the next hit that comes. Mm -hmm. And so the quicker you get back to that, the quicker you're ready for whatever comes your way. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, 
part. And then there are other basic things that we, you know, that we work on. We go through all the various uh, strokes, the flat, the top, just the, the slices, the, the, um, the serve. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 he, he showed me his new serve, what he's got, and, and, it, and it, work, but it, it works very well. Was it know. top speed? Um, or it's, the slice speed? Well, he's, he's, he's reconstructed it a bit, where right. his momentum is coming more forward. Right. He's making a higher point of contact. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 he's able to kick it higher now. Um, uh, he's taller, uh, stronger. Um, yeah, just 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 watching the whole arsenal being developed as two said, it's just just being sharp. And you know, I mean, he's doing things that uh, he wasn't doing before. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, everything comes from center. Right. And so my my job is always to center him, uh, uh, both on the court and off the court. Mm -hmm. And so it's you know it's very important. Are you often amazed when he comes back and you get to hit with him to see how developed it is? Uh, not really, because um, I've been doing it for a long time and I've got a lot more champions out there before before there. Um, uh, uh, I I always, you know, I, I have the confidence in myself back then when I was 11 and not necessarily getting that opportunity or, or you know, always strive toward those levels. And so when I see those levels, those are the levels that that I prefer to get to. So it's not a surprise. I, I that, that that's what you know the level that we work on to get. Mm -hmm. So when I see that, I'm like, yes. Now the next thing that goes on top of that, mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Because it's never ending. Right. It's just continuous learning and the continuous sharing of what we're learning. You know. I, I, he's twelve. Um, when can we see him possibly entering? I say like a Bermuda team or because there's a t I think there's a twelve, twelve team. In, I don't know you was you yeah. be back. Yes. When when can we see that? In, well, in Bermuda? when you when you look at the the uh, various levels of tennis development, mm -hmm. because what you will be referring to is tennis representation. Yeah. On the international level yeah. for yeah. for Bermuda, mm -hmm. and there's a difference in that. Uh, uh, some make the choice to uh, use tennis as a vehicle to get a scholarship into university. Mm -hmm. That's one level. And then when you have that person that chooses to to uh, uh, cultivate their tennis to become a tennis professional, then that's a little bit different because you're not just representing your country, but you're also uh, uh, going on to the global stage and mm -hmm. representing yourself and your family and. And, and and any and your coaches, mm -hmm. you know, and so uh, uh, therefore we keep those options wide open for the the, the necessary support that he needs in his growth. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been traveling uh, internationally since he was six years old. Um, uh, uh, that support came from the tennis community, mm -hmm. uh, 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 and 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 in particular grassroots. And so our loyalty is more with grassroots than it is for anything else, because as the pattern would normally uh, go, the autonomy, the, auton the autonomy uh, uh, would, would would shift to the governing body, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that's good for when they're going to university, but that's not necessarily the right thing for when they're going to to uh, uh, become a professional, because as you know, with them being out at Ralph Nadal Tennis Academy and the various uh, international tournaments that Dan plays in are well above anything that the Bermuda government body would be, um, you know, interacting in. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, 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 a catch-22 there where, you know, looking at Daniel's development, we want to make sure that he's continuing on that higher level path because it's going higher places. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Bermuda will stand to benefit from then you once he reaches where he reaches, and uh, uh, you know we don't really have a strong uh, economic supporting uh, uh, here in Bermuda. Mm -hmm. You know they always kind of wait until all oh, that cultivation is finished, then they want to come on board and mm -hmm. and come in and, and 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 you know get your player to 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 do everything that they would like him to do in terms of representing on the global stage. Uh, uh, we felt that. Uh, 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 he was a bit young to be put on the meat market, so to mm -hmm. speak. 
uh, that we would hold him back just like how Mr. Williams did with Venus and Serena. Mm -hmm. You know, no one could dictate to them uh, uh, what their, their children were going to be doing in terms of tournaments that they played in. Mm -hmm. And he had a specific reasoning as to why he chose to go the route that he did that was contrary to what was the conventional route. Mm -hmm. And as you could see, his, his results proved to be correct. He was, he was uh, 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 what's, what's the correct word? Um, uh, administered into the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. uh, uh, the other day of the NCAA, uh, what's it, the, the ATA, right. um, yeah. National Black Body of Tennis, mm -hmm. uh, but not necessarily accepted by the, 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 the entire body yeah. uh, uh, of tennis. And, and with Serena and Venus being what they are, it's no way that you can avoid coming to that, that, that fact. And mm -hmm. so, I'm, I'm saying that in order to come back to answer your question in reference to Daniel and representing Bermuda in the in the in the under 12s mm -hmm. uh, uh, would be the same reasoning why we haven't played in the under 14s and the under 16s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you know, those are the the, the 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 levels that he needs to reach reach forward to, and and um, you know, I'm just playing my political cards right. right. Uh, uh, keeping things real and maintaining the autonomy, most importantly with Daniel, because you know we've, we've got um, uh, uh, I should say I've got uh, Gavin Manders and 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 um, uh, 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 Javon Ritter that just came back from Davis Cup and Island Games mm -hmm. and 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 coaching them, you know, uh, uh, from the perspective of uh, 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 maintaining my sounding board in their life to assist them on the levels that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 often, we, you know, we run into problems with the uh, 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 governing bodies uh, that don't understand uh, from a player development perspective, you know, as much as they're responsible for the governing body administration aspect of, of, of tennis. There's a two clear different paths, mm -hmm. you know, because like I said, some on the path to getting a scholarship at a, at a university, that's one thing. Some are in it, like Daniel, to become a a, a world-class professional. That's a whole different ball game, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of uh, international representation. You see uh, uh, Dustin Brown mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the challenges that he uh, faced in his development mm -hmm. uh, in terms of Jamaica not necessarily supporting him financially and then him having to go to Germany because his, uh, I think his, uh, one of his parents was German mm -hmm. and went there and they gave him the financial support that he needed in order to go to top flight because mm -hmm. it becomes very, very expensive. Right. And if we're not going to Bermudians coming out and saying, well, here, Daniel, take this, take this, because you need it, you know what I mean? And then it becomes very difficult to, to uh, 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 engage and or commit in such a way that other opportunities that come up that will benefit him more, you know, we close ourselves to. So no, we want to keep those opportunities open. And so we, we, we hold on to that autonomy because we know and they know that Daniel is a special one. Mm -hmm. They know that now, right. you know what I mean? They've known that for a while. And, and um, you know what I mean? They play the cards the way they play the cards. And uh, uh, we're going to play them the way we're playing them and the results show. Mm -hmm. that 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 uh, probably from an historic perspective he's probably the first 12 year old that that's ever made it to a 16 uh, singles final mm -hmm. um, not alone win the, win the 14th I think that's probably been done before mm -hmm. but to make it to the finals over 16 no not in the history mm -hmm. somebody would have to show me that right. when in your talking with um, his coaches because mm -hmm. obviously you guys communicate on sure what what how long before we can he can possibly make that transition to tennis full time, be on the junior circuit, um, be a regular, you know, in in the sport. Well, um, uh, then we will be looking well, at fourteen. He needs, from a professional perspective, mm -hmm. making that drive. He needs to be heading toward the pros at that time. Um, he should be around 14, 15 years old, entering the the the, the uh, challenger, the, 
low amp basketball tournaments in which you can get gain points uh, 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 by winning a tournament in somewhere like um, Egypt or somewhere off the off the trail mm -hmm. where the competition is not as heavy, but it's still it's still heavy. Yes, yes. You know what I mean. But you're looking to get gain points mm -hmm. in order to take you to that next level. Yes. So so it's all strategic in terms of where you choose to play. That, mm -hmm. That's that's why we've taken Daniel the places that we've taken him in order to prepare him for that future and what's coming. At 14, he'll play in the uh, Road to Wimbledon, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, 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 a tournament series in England in which the, the children get an opportunity to actually play at, uh, at Wimbledon. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Dan's mom, you know, mom being from England, um, he has that right. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so we keep those options. Another reason why we keep the options open, yes. because if England says, you know, we like to take down you and they come up with some change, big change, and say, like, you know, yeah, you come over here, then I'm sure any Bermudian is not going to argue with the fact of, of getting in Daniel's way of his development for the, you know, Bermuda's um, personal gain of which they're not going to, to give him the necessary support that he could grow to become potentially that, that, that top player in the world, which is, you know, which, which is what he's aiming for. Thank you very much. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free with D Music, exclusively from Digicel. With D Music, you can stream and download songs and create playlists of your favorite artists to fit your lifestyle. Whether you're working out at the gym, getting ready for a Friday night, or just chilling at home, D Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in store or online to see how you can get D Music today. Jay, in just a week's time, <laughs> a little later than this particular show, a week from now, mm -hmm. um, the election will be, the polls will be closed. Mm -hmm. Done and dusted. And, and then it's now down to the counting time. Um, National swimming coach Ben Smith recently returned with uh, a group of swimmers from the uh, CC Can successful again championships, 38 medals, uh, plenty of records, and but he's also running uh, in for a spot in number 31. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a chance to speak with him about if he is successful and if the OBA government is successful in retaining the government. What are his plans? Let's get that interview with Ben Smith. <laughs> Well, Ben, today was nomination day, but the biggest question, obviously, is if you're successful in Constituency 31 and the OBA government continue to rule, what is next for you as the national coach of swimming? Well, I'm going to continue to work with the kids. Obviously, this is a passion for mine, of mine, and uh, I've been working hard with them, challenging them, and you see what the results of that is. Uh, the reason that people came to me and asked me to be involved is because they see what I've been able to do with the youth and the reason that I am putting my my name forward is because I would like to continue to progress what we're doing with our youth but now for the whole island as opposed to just one sport um, and I believe I can do both of those things because the challenge that I have each day with my swimmers teaching them and guiding them in the direction that we want because Really, we're not just trying to work on athletes, you're trying to work on people. Um, I believe that that work that I'm doing is important to anything else that I would do for, for the government if, if I'm successful in that position. So I believe I can do both things well, um, challenge my swimmers and challenge the people that I'm going to be working with. Some might say there, there could be times of conflict. Um, how do you plan because you've got to have a you got to have a plan in place how do you plan to address those things if hypothetically you become a minister of say sport correct so obviously if 
if those opportunities come about, there's going to have to be some discussions about what's going to happen. The initial conversations that I've had is that obviously I'm brand new to this. Uh, I was not, you know, schooled in being in politics very well. So to me, it's going to take some time. I'm going to have to learn the ropes. So I'm probably going to have to spend some time getting to know all of that information. I don't think it's something that I would get thrown into immediately. So if we got to a situation where that opportunity was going to come about, then there's going to be a lot of discussion about how I would be able to do both of those things. But for now, obviously, my focus is on continuing to keep these youngsters moving in the right direction. And I'm hoping that I'll also have an opportunity to help to move the country in the right direction. What has the day been like for you? Nomination day. Um, so obviously, you've had a full schedule. And, and the next two weeks will be pretty much the same. But what, what, what do you say has been the highlight of the day for you? Well, obviously, it was, it, it's, it's, an, it's an emotional day as well as a lot of kind of hard work. I finish on a high from what we were able to accomplish in Trinidad. I fly back early from the team, get back to Bermuda, get nominated. So when you put all of those things together, it's obviously a, a hectic schedule, but it's enjoyable. I, I spent the afternoon canvassing and going door to door and, and meeting people in Bermuda and discussing what the future Bermuda looks like and then I get to come here and spend some time with my, my team members who have just had an amazing performance so I can't ask for more. It's, it's, it's an amazing experience and I'm hoping to continue with it. Well good luck in 14 days. Uh, we'll be there right after to find out what's next for Ben Smith swimming and government. Thank you so much. LJ, you've heard from Ben, but uh, both sides are talking, but we're going to stay to the sports side. So both sides, PLP and the OBA, have talked about or muted a, a very limited talk about a sports lottery because no one gets into depth about how this will be funded and what the target audience would be. I'm shaking my head, Earl, because this has been thrown around now. It's like basically we're just kicking this can down the street. Mm. We've heard time after we've even heard the permanent secretary mm. talk about it sure and he's very much for it mm. but he's just the permanent secretary we've heard many ministers come in and huff and puff <laughs> and that's all you hear yeah and then it goes quiet mm. we've seen it work in other jurisdictions the things that are being put in place now are the the standard that we're trying to put in place for every sport mm -hmm. having licensed coaches we see that in every sport now these coaches have to be qualified mm -hmm. licensed the whole nine mm -hmm. obviously that's a cost yeah because especially for a sport that's not uh, generate no revenue coming mm -hmm. through a gate so these are um to rent these facilities is a cost mm -hmm. all these things of a cost so without the, a government supporting sport gracefully, yeah. <laughs> graciously, <Yeah. laughs> a lot of these things put a strain on the local um, administrations. Mm -hmm. We went through a recession and we saw the present government cut back on a lot of things. So right then, you knew the sports budget got cut. Mm. Something, some people lost jobs. Yes. Yeah within these sporting organizations yeah. due to that. So what does a sport lottery do, do, really? What does it do? Well, it offers an opportunity for funding um, in a legal way mm -hmm. to be opened up for the government to disperse funds to organizations that fit the criteria that are put in place. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> it also <laughs> yes it also allows yes. them to put money into other areas such as health and seniors yes yeah which are which are and, and education which is much needed which now, is also under the umbrella right now of the ministry the 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 downside to that is the worrying part is you have a group of people that will come out and say well people will lose their homes people will well people could do that right now right 
right in this day. Yeah, all right. Let me just stop here. I'm I'm tired of hypocrisy. I'm yeah, really tired well, of the hypocrisy. That, but that's 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 the I'm underlying. I'm tired of the hypocrisy mm -hmm. about the gaming or the gambling mm -hmm. or whatever. We have bingo. Yes. And at one point in time, we have bingo. I believe on every day of the week besides Sunday. That's right. Yeah. All right. And this bingo just didn't happen in the last rainfall. Yeah. Sorry to say, folks, it's gambling. Yes. Okay, we've had online betting for moons now. Yeah. We've had horse racing for many, moons. for many moons. Mm -hmm. We have gambling on games locally. <laughs> That's right. For many moons. Yeah. Hate to tell you, folks, gambling's here. Yeah. So let's regulate it mm -hmm. and let some of the profits. Benefit the country. Benefit the country mm -hmm. instead of going one way. Yeah, yeah. Simple now, you also use that same money to help protect against gambling anonymous and, and mm -hmm. things and addictions and things right, like that. Right. Because it's also they need funding that's also that's for right. the programs. They're going to need it. Yeah. They're going to need it. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw this happen in the, especially in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Um, and I too, we, we spoke about it before. They were all out against gaming machines due to that. Right. But a lottery they were in it for. Mm. And we're seeing, they, they, I mean, you can read the reports regarding that, how that's helped all those issues. Not only just sport, but also schools mm -hmm. and infrastructure. Right. right. Which, well, that's another two stories we could talk about. But that's, these are things that can help. Now, we're hearing both candidates talk about it. Yeah. But I, you know, I mean, the how politics is and, until you got a big wave behind you that's mm -hmm. going to push you, mm -hmm. and you just keep talking and keep pushing this can but down you the road. The, you know what the, the funny part is, Jay? Who's to say that any one of the two that are now currently present um, Minister of Sport and Shadow Minister of Sport will hold that position if Ren government is reconvened? Because there lies the problem, you know. Well, we, see, that's another problem we have. That's another problem we have. You can have your wish list. Yeah. If, if I am the Minister of Sport, this is what I'll do. But on the day, um, I'm swearing you in yeah. as the Minister of Economic Development. Huh? Yeah, we, we, we've seen that. I, I, me personally, I think it's just irresponsible of, of, of the governing party mm. or any party that puts somebody in a ministry that doesn't have a wealth of knowledge prior. Mm -hmm. I believe in this day and age, we just can't be learning on the job <laughs> where we're trying to protect so many people. Well, and we're seeing that uh, with both parties <laughs> over yeah, the years. Yeah. So hopefully we have a sports minister and, I, and I'm, I'm not knocking anybody in the past. I'm just mm -hmm. saying hopefully you have a sports minister or an ex-sports minister um, will have a very good idea and knowledge of these sporting organizations, what it takes to make these tick, but also what it takes to go forward because we, we just can't, oh, well, we did this 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. The world has changed. Yes. There's the parameters, of, you know, somebody move the goalposts, mm -hmm. as you want to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things are, and they are continuously changing. Yes. Yes. Well, um, today was um, advanced polling. Uh, we're going to see if we can't tomorrow get a quick interview with uh, the shadow, current shadow minister of sport and the current minister of sport um, to have on for Thursday's Digital Sports Show. And like I said, it'll be interesting to hear how they felt we've come in mm -hmm. the last few years, but also... What's their insight yeah. of going forward? Right. Well, that's the way we'll end this Digital Sports Show right here on islandstats.com. I'm your host, Earl Basin, and Juggling Jay, do enjoy your evening. Yeah. Well, the thing is, right?